So today I wanted to speak about something that I had a lot of troubles with uh, during general chemistry and that's the quantum mechanics idea of a particle in a box. So first let's um, familiarize ourselves with what is the particle in the box problem. So first of all it's a hypothetical situation. Um, it's a hypothetical situation in which we have a particle which is um, usually an electron and it, it's trapped in a box with um, very high um, ends, so the particle can't escape. And it's very important to know that this is not a real um, situation in nature. It's not like the electron is really trapped in the atom like a box or something like that. It's not. It's just a situation that, um, you know, scientists or professors created to illustrate the mathematics of the wave function. And hopefully you've already learned about the wave function psi and the wave function squared, um, psi squared. Um, and again, the particle in the box just helps us understand the, how come the energy is quantitized. And um, it helps us understand the probability of finding an electron, as well as the concept of nodes, um, which we're, I hopefully you've already covered what nodes are, um, nodes are where, where the wave function is zero. Nodes are where we cannot find electrons. And we're also going to see it um, in the problems. So moving on to familiarizing ourselves with the actual box. What is the box? This is the box. Zero is um, where the box starts and L is the length of, of the, ba the box. This is the maximum length and in here we're going to have um, amplitude and you don't need to worry about the amplitude at all to solve these kind of problems just don't worry about it but just know it's amplitude because a lot of people see usually it's written L over 2 a lot of people see the L over 2 and they're like oh okay it's somehow related to the problem it's not just don't worry about it just know that this the y axis is the amplitude and the x axis is the length and um, we can look at the box in two ways this is um, psi. Again, this is not psi squared. It's the wave function not squared. It's psi. And when we have psi, we have um, the amplitude um, with a square root. And if we take an example, n equals 2, for example, um, the psi wave function uh, graph will look something like this. But when we square it, when we try to find the probability, we're going to find um, that we can't have this because this is negative. And you know, when you square something, you cannot have anything negative. Um, so the function will look something like this. Oh, geez, this is a really bad drawing. But you, you got the point. You're not going to have um, a negative um, in here. And the way you would label it L would be the maximum length. The maximum length for n equals 2 would be 2L over 2, which is essentially is L because 2 and 2 cancels out. And half of it will be 1L over 2, which is just L over 2. And 0 is the beginning, um, essentially, uh, where the box starts. So this is the main uh, setup of the um, of the particle in a box and we can go ahead and move to an example okay um, so this is exactly what I did a second ago actually um, the n equals 2 um, so let's say, sorry about the confusion, okay, let's take an actual problem. 
So what is the probability of finding an electron between L over 2 and L? And the second question we're going to answer is, um, what is the probability of finding an electron at L um, divided by 2? So, if we look at our graph again, um, first of all, we need to label it. Um, since it's L over, since our n is 2, and uh, if you remember the formula for nodes, nodes are going to be always n minus, n minus 1. So if we have n equals 2, 2 minus 1 equal 1 node. Okay? So we know we're going to have only one node. If it was n equals 3, by the way, it would be 2 nodes. And we have like um, three hills, we can say. And these are the nodes. So with n equals 2, we have two nodes. Um, and our node is going to be right in the middle. So if that's 2, 2L two over 2, meaning that's L. If that's 2 over 2, then half of this is 1L over 2. So our uh, node is at 1L over 2. Okay, so now looking at the first question, what is the probability of finding an electron between L over 2? Between L over 2 and L. Okay, so they want to know what, what's the probability of finding an electron here. Well, we know that the electron must be somewhere in the box. The electron cannot escape the box because we have really high walls. Um, this is just a given. The electron can't just run away. Uh, so everything altogether is 100%. And half of that would be 50% between L and L, L over 2 and L. So this is our answer, 50%. Um, and what is the, pro for, let's go uh, move on to the second question. What is the probability of finding an electron at L divided by 2? Well, this is L divided by 2. What is the probability of finding here? Well, what is the probability, what is the psi square of finding an electron at a node? Well, hopefully you know it's zero. Not only that you can see it from the graph, there is nothing here. We know um, it's like... It's like chemistry 101. There are no electrons at nodes. Zero probability of finding an electron at a node. So, um, this is a complete um, question with the answers 50% and zero. And um, for a harder example, move on to my next video.